Hello everyone, I am Snitter and welcome to part 3 of my Gravity Platformer series. In the previous video I showed a neat little trick for drawing reusable vertex buffers that support non-uniform scaling. Then I added three new shapes, a capsule, a torus and a disc. In today's video I'd like to continue by adding more primitives. A block and a cylinder. And without further ado, let's start the programming. Hello people and welcome to another game dev video. Today I'm going to work on the 3D gravity platformer. Um, so I'm going to start by just downloading the source from the previous video. Um, hopefully this video will be short and sweet. Um, my plan for today is to uh, clean up the code that I wrote last time uh, and to add uh, a cube and maybe a cylinder. I'll see what I have time to do. So I did a lot of stuff last time. I'll change this to part three. Um, but the code is um, getting pretty messy. Um, I also did something wrong last time or I forgot to do something because when you draw a torus you give it an up vector uh, but I'm not using that anywhere, uh, so that if I change the up vector, um, I will collide with it correctly, but it won't draw correctly. So that needs to be fixed. So I can use the same trick as I used for the, um, the capsule. Um, so for now, I'll just copy this over. Uh, I also have to load the uh, normal of the torus, four, five, six. Um, and for the up vector, I want to use the normal of the torus. And for the looking direction, I'll still use the uh, the cheap trick. I maybe I will replace this later. I'll see what I'll do. Um, and then I need to scale the entire thing. Zero. One, two, pi r one, four, five, six, eight, nine, and ten. And then I'll use that matrix here, and I'll just see if that it still works. Um, it's not where I expected it to be, but that might be because, yeah, the position is called SX, SX, not SX1. I'll try again. So now it looks the same as it did. And I will try to add another one. Add torus. I'll add another one with a different up vector. And we'll see what happens then. Okay, there they are. Let's see if we can reach them. I have this neat little trick to, to get to it. Okay, so now we have two tori, toruses, tor tori. Uh, I can actually add another one with a different up vector and see what happens then. And there it is. Okay, so now that works. And I would also like to put this into a script. Um, so just for now, I'll add a new function, matrix build from vector. So what you need to build a matrix, um, all you need is two vectors um, and you need to know that they are never parallel. So if you have two vectors that are not parallel, you can always create a, uh, a matrix, uh, 16 by no, four by four matrix. Um, so I'll put in translation and vector. Uh, 
And let's use that. And 12 equals x. 13, 14, y, z. So this is the translation of the matrix. And actually, instead of doing this, because I don't really need that, I can just create the matrix directly. So it'll be 1 pi square root of 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I think that's it. Uh, that's 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's x up, y up, z up, 0, x, y, z. There we go. And I'll use uppercase um, coordinates just to not confuse them with the, the built-in variables. Um, I mentioned I wanted to get rid of this. Maybe I should just do that now. Name this vx, vy, vz. And this will be the up vector. Um, okay. Um, if v, the absolute value of vx is less. Then let's see. Because, okay, if hmm, yes, the minimum of the absolute of Vy and the absolute of Vz. Then I can use one zero zero. Otherwise, I'll use zero one one. Now we are guaranteed to never have a vector that is. Can actually do it like this. There we go. And maybe I should also add scaling because I need to scale it here. And I also scale it here. Scale, side, scale, up, scale. So I multiply the two direction with the two scale, the side direction with the side scale, and the up direction with the up scale. Return. Okay, let's try using this instead. That should be SX, SY, SZ, NX, NY, NZ, R1, R1, R1. It may still work. So let's put this into the math uh, script so that I can use it other places as well. For example, here. Let's see, that should be NX. Oh, 
Let's make sure the capsule still works. Yeah, it seems to work. And I need to do this for the disk as well. Okay, so that's out of the way. I also want to clean up the uh, create event because I have a lot of these create sphere, create tours functions. Um, so I'll actually just put that into its own script. Create shapes. And now I need to use a global format. Let's see. Now let's make sure everything still works. Perfect. So that's a little neater player model. Create a reusable primitives. Yes. Um, the final thing I want to clean up is the step event because the collisions are cluttering up everything here. So if you notice, um, the unique part for each shape is here, while this part is the same for every shape. Not this one, but this. Mm -hmm. So I can actually just copy this, let's see. Put it down there. And let's see what happens then. Everything seems to work. So that's a lot of code uh, removed already. And I think I will leave the rest as it is. So I want to continue by adding a new shape. I think I said cube earlier, but I meant block. Um, the difference is that a cube is cubical. A cubical. <laughs> While a block can be scaled differently in each direction. Let's see, so I'll add a block. Now, um, I want the block to be able to rotate in any direction, so I can't just supply a position and a scale, I actually need to supply an orientation. And I could send it a uh, matrix, but instead I'm going to send it two vectors because, as I mentioned, you can create a unique matrix from two vectors. Um, so I will actually give it position. I'll give it two direction and an up direction. And I will also give it a two scale, a side scale and an up scale. Let's expand it this for, for a moment. And I need to use this to create a matrix. Um, so I can just do it the same way that I just did. x2, y2, z2, 0. And then I don't need the side direction just yet. And then the x up, y up, z up, 0. And then x, y, z. There we go. Um, matrix orthogonalize. Matrix scale. Did I make that function yet? Function matrix scale. 
Um, I'm actually put this in there. matrix scale and I'll just copy these and to add the block I'll just give it the matrix so just to make things simpler I'll remove everything else and just include the block add zero 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 um, I'll make it point along the x direction and this z direction and I'll give it a size of 150 in each dimension so it will actually be a cube um, now the next part is going to be me making a cube vertex buffer and that is pretty easy but it's very tedious so you won't miss anything if you skip but for those of you who want to follow all the way through you're welcome. Um, so the reusable vertex buffer is just going to go from minus one, minus one, one, minus one to plus one, plus one, plus one. Um, so we'll call it create cube. Uh, and I can get rid of all of this. I just want to copy that. So basically, I have to create each face individually. What I usually do when I put cubes in a game, I just create them as an OBJ file and load it with an OBJ folder, uh, um, loader. Um, but, well, I have created all the other shapes um, manually, so I'll do this one as well. Uh, so I'll start by creating the positive x direction. Actually, I'll start with the positive z. So here I can't use that neat little trick that I showed last time because the cube has like sharp edges uh, so I need to bake the positions. Luckily it can still be reused anyway. So minus one, minus one, and this is positive z so that needs to be one. Still positive z so this needs to point in the z direction. This should be a zero, zero. And I have done this many times before. <laughs> um, let's see, so I'm just gonna quickly try to, uh, to finish this. I just have to see if, if this works. Case cube. Ah, oh, it's called block. I forget. I also need to create the block model. And I will just draw it at zero, zero, zero with a scale of 150, 150, 150. This should be zero. And I also need to do the step event. Um, so I'll just copy the spherical collisions from it. Block. Zero, zero, zero. Um, 
um, drawings. Okay, so that's one face down. Um, so then adding the negative z is pretty easy. It's just inverting all of these. Minus one, let's see. And I also need to change the order of the triangles, otherwise the um, back face calling won't work properly. So let's see, okay, now we have two faces. And I will copy this. And now I'll do positive x. So I'll just switch these. And I'll change the vector to be positive x. see what happens. Okay, it's drawn correctly except it's the wrong order. So now I can easily do negative x. So all of these need to be negative. I think we should have four of six, four out of six faces down. There we go. So let's add positive y last. So I will again switch x and y. And the normal should be along the positive y. Make sure that's drawn the correct way. It's drawn inside out, so I'll it's positive y. I'll copy it so that I don't have to change the order for the negative y. And then I'll change the order. And I'll add the negative y face. Cube. Now for the fun stuff. We're going to collide with the cube. Um, so the cubes or the blocks matrix is in the first index. And the first thing I'm going to do is to just get the delta vector going from the cube to the player. We have to figure out where the player is compared to the cube's orientation. And just keep in mind, whenever I say cube, I mean block. <laughs> uh, so we need to do a dot product between each um, vector. So I'll do the two direction first. Two other directions, side and up. So side is index four, five, six. Up is index eight, nine, and ten. There we go. So these will be between zero. No, actually not. Um, because this is not a normal or, or a unit vector. So I need to divide by the length of that vector squared, actually. So I can just do the dot product to square. M0 times M0 plus M1 times M1 plus M2 times M2. 
do that for the other as well. Four, four, five, five, six, six, and then it's eight, nine. I hate that 10 is two dig digits instead of just one like the others. Okay, so I need to divide this. By the square of the axis. Okay, so now this will go between minus one and one for any point inside the cube. If, if the point is outside the cube, this will be one. Or larger than one, actually. Um, so I need to clamp them to find the nearest point on the surface of the cube. So if I just do that, I can actually do this, clamp 2dp minus 1, 1. No. And now I can use these to reconstruct the position. So we have the cube's position, and then we need to add the two dot product multiplied by the two direction. So that's two dp times m zero. And then the side direction times m four. And then last, the up direction m8 and I need to do the same for the other dimensions 12 13 14 1 2 5 6 9 and then 10 and that should actually be 0 so I can just remove it and let's see what happens yeah that looks correct to me um, let's try scaling the cube slightly. Now it does not work. Oh, it doesn't draw correctly. Um, let's see. So I need to set the matrix. I can actually use that directly. So let's see what happens then. Uh, that did not work. Um, why didn't that work? Is this not a proper matrix? X, Y, Z, 1. There we go. Okay. Let us also try to rotate the cube slightly. I'll just change the looking direction to like something random. Make sure it still works. Yeah, so that's how you do a cube. However, there is one um, special case and that is if the player is inside the cube. Um, let's try placing him at, for example, 100 which is well inside the cube, which is 160 units tall. And then we get an error. Because, um, let's see. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Um, what we need to do instead is to add a special case for when one or the, the largest of these is less than one. So I'll add a new variable called m and I'll figure out the largest one of the absolute values because they can be negative as well. And that is just as valid. And if that is less or equal to one, then we need to do some trickery to push the player out.
Um, I will actually try to figure out which axis this is. So if m is equal to a, b, s, 2, d, p, then 2, d, p is equal to 1. No, no, that is wrong. Let's see, sine d, p. I think I need to find the actual length of the vector. So I need to do the square root. Um, so I want this to be dp times l plus radius over l. I think that's correct. Um, I'll copy this. Side and then up last, up, and then I need to set the position of the player directly here X, Y, Z. I'll just test it and see what happens. Okay, so the player actually bounced off. Um, since this is a fail safe, I think I should actually change the previous position. Or should I? Okay, let's uh, the. The cube is 160 tall, so I'll set it the player to 150. Yeah. Okay, so that's a cube. Should I add a cylinder as well? Yeah. Yeah, I should. Cylinder. So the process is pretty much the same. I need to create the vertex buffer, and that's going to take a little while, but as last time, feel free to skip it. Um, I'll put the chapter times down in the description and you can just skip to the next chapter. Um, so I will actually copy the capsule. I guess they aren't that different. So I better create a cylinder. And I'll just name this steps instead. So now I already have the tube. Now I need to add the ends. And I think I can just use these. Copy this. So the vertex normal is that. Let's see, two is x a two. Yeah, perfect. So that starts at zero. The cosine of zero is one. So the first one should be one, zero, and 
that right. <coughs> so I'll go back to create event I'll add a cylinder here so the cylinder will have the same parameters as the um, Capsule. I'll add, add a cylinder. And let's see, zero, 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 two hundred, zero, zero. Go to draw event. I'll copy the block and I'll copy the capsule. Cylinder. And last, I'll just copy the sphere collision for the cylinder. Okay, we have a tube and we do also have the end. Um, but I need to fix the, um, let's see here. That should be 0.5 plus 0.5 times that. No, the text chord. Also, it's the wrong way, so I'll switch these two over. Well, that's very wrong. That makes no sense. Actually, it does because this needs to be 0.5 times V. There we go. Also, the normal needs to be negative one for this side. Position needs to be stored in the let's see because that is actually supposed to be here. Yeah, there we go. So normal should be negative one, and let's see what happens then.
I am thinking. Okay, I'll just switch these. Let's see. See if it works. No, nothing. Hmm. Oh, right. Wait. That should be SR SR. Okay, now the edge is drawn at least. <laughs> All right. One, one, one. Now it should work. There we go. Um, I just need to create the other lid as well. Lid. And the top lid. Yes, now I have two lids, and now I need to. Do the collisions. Um, I copied the sphere, but I think it makes more sense to copy the capsule. So instead of getting the nearest position along the central line, I will get the nearest position on the surface of the cylinder. Y, DZ, um, okay, so I found the central position here. Now Actually, I shouldn't clap this. If DP is larger than one, less than zero, or DP is larger than one. So if we are on either side, then we need to be attracted towards the, the cylinder and uh, the edge of the cylinder.
then I should limit this. Hmm, mm, let me think here. Yeah. So I'll just give me vector dx, and that should be player dx minus cap dx times dp. Y, Z, Y, Z, Y, Z. And I will normalize that. No, I will not actually. That should be limited by the radius. So I will do a minimum of SR and that. And then I can get the xx is equal to sx1 plus cap dx times dt plus vx times L. Y, Z. Else. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> radius. Mm. Square root of that. Okay, that makes no sense. Actually, still need to clamp this. No, I don't. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Okay, they need to be divided by V. Let's 
try this. Okay, well that's pretty cool, but not what I expected. Okay, what if I do this SR over V? Okay, so now you can actually avoid the edge. There we go. Okay, so now I need to do the um, this as well. I can actually use this. This is all there is to it. And there we go. Perfect. So today I have added two new uh, shapes, a block and a cylinder. That took less than an hour. I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, next time I want to create a more interesting sky. Actually, before I finish today, I would like to uh, make a little level model. 400 watt direction, let's see. So that you can play around and see yeah, how the system works. Okay, I'll add a uh, pixel going from minus 500 to 400, 200 there. Let's see what that looks like. Make it smaller. And I will add a couple of uh, tori. <laughs> Taurus. Let's see. So large radius, let's see, what is the large and what is the small radius, Taurus, so R2 is the small radius, do the same for the ring, 
it's always good to have descriptive variable names. So large R, and small R, or the major radius and the minor radius. So let's make it 400 and 100. And we can move these, let's see, at the negative 5, 7, Let's just see if that's possible to reach. Yeah, definitely. Might add a couple more. I'll make them a bit thinner. And what shape haven't I used? Block, of course. Minus 200, minus 500, minus 100, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. One, one, uh, twenty by two hundred by four hundred. And last, um, disk. Actually, that's enough. Yes. So, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll leave the link in the description so you can download the source and play around with it yourself. Um, yeah, I got a lot of work done today, and I am happy. So, I'll see you around for the next video. Thank you for watching.